Welcome back to Elden Ring. At the end of the last episode, I was going to continue in the capital, but I have a new idea. I just remembered that a while ago when we were going to the city of Nokron, well, we got the that like blade or severed, I think it was a severed finger. I wasn't sure what to do with it. I kind of forgot why we're even in that city in the first place, but I just remembered, right, we went there because of Ronnie. Maybe we can take the finger to Ronnie. It was thee, not blithe it seemeth. Even in my slumber I sensed it. It is in thy possession, is it not? The hidden treasure of Nokron. Ah, yes. My thanks. Finally all the pieces are in place. Soon must I begin my journey. Upon the dark path only I may tread. Ah, but before I leave... I shall entrust thee with this. Is it a key? Well, it's a key item. Carry an inverted statue. My thanks for thy sterling efforts. A strange gift, perhaps. But a rare sort such as thee would welcome it, I'm sure. I am certain now. Fate steered us to our reunion. I must thank Torrent, too, for his part. You may leave now. It was but brief. But thou gavest me fine service. What is it? You may go. I too am to depart on a journey. Upon the dark path only I may tread. What is it? I too... Key revealing the hidden form of Carrion Study Hall. Statuette of a scholar with ground and sky inverted. Reveals the hidden form of the Carrion Study Hall, which connects to the Divine Tower. To unveil the secret, affix it to the pedestal of the Celestial Globe. So this is the Study Hall connecting to the Divine Tower. Next to Jarberg. So cool. So what has changed about this place? Anything back here? This was here before, right? I think so. Oh, it's literally just upside down. Yeah, this whole area is literally upside down. Oh, that is so cool. Even the water's upside down. Preceptor Miriam. That is so cool. You're gonna dodge my shots, aren't you? Yeah. Let's try, actually, let's try Rock Sling. Oh, 
they moved. They're gonna keep teleporting away, maybe. Just like they did before. Wait, what? Where are you? I don't know, but I can't see them and they can't see me, so that's fine. I can drop down to it. I gotta find another way in. Oh, I think we can just walk over to it. Mask of Confidence. Looks creepy as hell. Mask with a mouth sewn shut with a gold thread. Increases arcane by th three. When Redigan married Renala, he ordered the Carrion Magic Preceptors to don these masks to make it clear that all of their matters were to be kept strictly private. Yeah, it's a serial killer mask. I think one of the hands dropped an item over there, but meh. Our first new spell in a long time, Lucidity. bottom of the chandeliers. We could also... Oh, didn't mean to make that fall. I was going to say we could probably survive it, and yes, we can. Yeah, I don't see anything on the chandeliers, so I think that would just lead you to here, ultimately, I think. I want to look at that spell. Can't use it yet, of course. Can't memorize it, but... Lucidity alleviates buildup of sleep and madness. Hmm, okay, that's not going to be useful most of the time. But sometimes I'm sure it will be. nothing around here at all. I think I just need to drop down. There's an item on the next level down. Oh, 
What are these things? Oh, just ornamental thingies. Another item over there, and a ladder. And we can just drop straight down, also. Oh, I can't use that ladder, no. That's for the other world, the other version. There's a staircase? Yeah. This is a huge staircase, but I can't actually use the stairs. What does this do? Is this a lift? Oh, the entire pillar, including the staircase, is a lift. What if there's anything there? Could I have dropped out even if I wanted to? Maybe not. Looks so bizarre upside down, walking on the ceiling. a cutscene for opening it? I'm scared. Oh. We're up on the bridge. Right, the lift took us closer to the ceiling. So it took us down, but it was actually up. Try horseback battle. Oh, sweet. Try parrying and then try scarlet rot. Something plump ahead. Okay, you're plump sort. What? What are you? It looks like they're shooting death magic at me. Is that it? You're very slow. Oh, they have a lot of hit points. Okay, they can get a bit faster. Hey, they have a tail! Oh! I'll never get to them in time. Oh no! Oh wow! Interesting, I thought they were a human, and maybe they're partly human, but yeah, they have a tail and they can also, like, inflate themselves? I wonder if that's some sort of, like, reptilian air sac or something. My stamina comes back really slow. I think I want to replace this with the stamina regeneration. Oh. 
Oh my god! I didn't think they'd be able to hurt me a second time. Yeah, I think they're like a giant lizard person. I think I saw scales. Skin, noble hood, robe, bracelets, and trousers. Ooh. Tower of Liernia. No fingers here, like the other one. Curse mark of death, it's a key item. And a stargazer heirloom. Raises intelligence by five, actually. Ooh. Okay, we also have the curse mark of death. Curse mark carved into lunar princess Ronnie's discarded flat that's Ronnie? Curse mark carved into the discarded flesh of Ronnie the Witch, also known as the half-wheel wound of the centipede. I thought it looked like a centipede. This curse mark was carved at the moment of death of the first demigod and should have taken the shape of a circle. However, two demigods perished at the same time, breaking the curse mark into two half-wheels. Ronnie was the first of the demigods whose flesh perished, while the Prince of Death perished in soul alone. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, it should have been a full circle, but it only ended up half because two passed away at the same time. Like, remember how Ronnie has basically two parts to them? They have like this weird spectral half to them and then their other like more corporeal looking blue form. And this is split into two half wheels. It's got to be related. I wonder if the Ronnie like, are we meant to think that the Ronnie that we just saw ended up here or I feel like it's more like Ronnie 
Ronnie's flesh perished a while ago, and the Ronnie that we've been seeing is, well, not the flesh version of them. What do I do with that, though? It's a key item. Can I bring it back to Ronnie? I... I guess maybe. That'd be kind of weird. They also just might not be there anymore. But we should try. Look at this view. It's quite foggy, but you can still see outlines. I think we're looking at the capital. Yeah, we're looking in the direction of the capital. In fact, right there is that like walkway that leads right into the Earth Tree. We're just seeing it from very, very far away. That's really cool. And you can see there's another divine tower there. Right behind my head. Let's see if Ronnie's back here. No, they're not here anymore. Let's see if the other people here have anything to say. Saluvis? Well, Saluvis is dead. Which is a very good thing. Fuck that prick. Oh, they're wearing that mask. Uh, what was that mask of? Because that means they're probably of the same order. Mask of Confidence. Mask... Uh-huh. He ordered the Carrion Magic Preceptors. Oh, right. I think they were named Preceptor Saluvius, right? Saluvius's bell-bearing and a full set of their armor. Their gown might be pretty. Gloves. Trousers look bleh. Wait, what is this? Summons Spirit of Finger Maiden Theralina. Summons Jar White Spirit. Who's that creepy ass person with a pot on their head? Uh, take Starlight Shards. Starlight Shards are a currency? I've been using them. Well, I guess I don't need these anyway. One of Saluvis's puppets. Oh, I don't like that. Spirit of Finger Maiden, who never met the Tarnished she was meant to guide, uses healing incantations and holy water pots, but she is not a fighter by nature and is ill-suited to battle. A maiden without a Tarnished, a Tarnished without a maiden, and yet no guide to bring them together. Interesting, so you can summon someone who's just support. It doesn't really battle, they just heal you, I guess. And maybe throw holy water pots at the enemy? Spirit of a man who wished to become the innards of a living jar. A jar-hurling specialist who throws all manner of pots and jars. The warrior jar once told the nameless man this. You are not yet ready to join the warriors inside. No, you must apply yourself. Better yourself. And one day I will return for you. The warriors inside? Right, the other... That big pot we talked to talked about, like, stuffing warriors inside of them. So, one day I'll return and stuff you inside of myself. Wow, everything about that is just fucked up. Was there anything up here? Like, I think we've been up here before, but I'm not sure. Yep, we've already been up here. Oh. Didn't even see that. Black Wolf Mask. Well, we have a lot of armor to check out. I'll check that out later. Two full sets and one extra mask. But there's something else I want to do first. There's this cellar here that had a bunch of Saluvis' puppets in it. I wonder if anything's changed now that Saluvis is dead. Can't target them, can't talk to them. In fact, if I hit them, would blood even come out? No. Right, there's a message here. Saluvis's puppet, do not touch. 
Oh, that's the creep of the jar on their head that we can summon, I guess. Or maybe it's another one? Maybe there's multiple of them. Yeah, okay, nothing we can do here. Let's see if Celia has anything to say. There you are. No. Let's see if Renal has anything to say. No. Well, back to the capital. Oh yeah, let's check out our armor. So we have the wolf mask. Mask fashioned after the head of a black wolf. Relic of an assassin who assumed the guise of Ronnie the Witch's loyal shadow. The likeness is striking. Rar. Aside from that, we have two full sets of armor. Uh, okay, we have the godskin stuff. I can tell you now, this robe is not going to fit me very well. No, <laughs> that really doesn't fit me. <laughs> what is on that thing? Creepy faces. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's so padded. It's heavily padded. It's like I'm embedded in a beanbag chair. Robe made by sewing together patches of smooth skin. Oh, it's literally made from skin. Jesus. Subcutaneous fat makes it plump and soft. Worn by godskin nobles known for their seven face aprons. Oh, it does have seven faces, doesn't it? Strengthens the noble presence incantation. Nobles are the most ancient apostles who are said to have assimilated inhuman physiology. Not unlike the crucible, the Ur tree in its primordial form. That is interesting. Um, let's stick with that armor set and see if any of the other pieces maybe look good. God's Knoble bracelets. Um, yeah, I mean that looks pretty. Very elegant. So compare those to the to the queen's bracelets. Same weight. Hmm. It's very similar. Very, very similar. Kind of like give a little bit in one area, take a little bit in another. Same weight. I do like how they look though. Let's go with those for now. And the pants. Hmm. God's can noble trousers. Oh, right, I'm wearing super heavy pants right now. Well, there's no real, real point in changing them if I can't even see them. Okay, Preceptor's armor is the other stuff. I think there was the Preceptor... Preceptor's big hat. It's very neat, but it's definitely not me. Large hat with the movements of the stars drawn on the inside of the brim. And worn by the magic preceptors who serve the Carrion Royals, increases mind to the detriment of stamina. Hmm. Yeah, my mind goes up by three. Wait, is that right or am I just looking at the wrong thing? No, that's right. Yeah, mind goes up by three, but the stamina goes down by ten. How about the other parts? Preceptor's long gown. Quite a bit heavier than my dress, of course. Better at pretty much everything. Bright blue gown with the movements of the stars drawn upon it. Okay, yeah, they all have the movement of the stars on them. Wait, there's something interesting there. Glintstone sorceries are the descendants of astrologers, a fact that the Carrions remain aware of, even if their fate has been long severed from the stars. I really do like the blue center with all the stars drawn upon it. But I really like the elegance of the deathbed dress. This has kind of stuffy shoulders or like, I don't know, just make my sh makes my shoulders look really big. It looks very bulky. Preceptor's gloves. Nope, don't like how that looks. And the pants, probably not much point. 
but I don't know. Let's see. How's the weight? Now they're much lighter. Much less protection. Great focus and vitality, of course. Yeah, let's go with this. Oh, there's also a hood for the... Yeah, Godskin Noble Hood. Better at everything, of course, except weight. Oh. That uh, seems like it's meant to be worn with everything else. That really doesn't fit on its own. Damn. <laughs> oh my god. It has... There's like a single face there. You can... Oh, let me get a closer view on this. You can really see that this is skin. Oh, that is so gross. Wait, can you continue this way? No. Battle required ahead, so maybe if I hit that, it'll fall down. Hmm. Can't look up to see what it's connected to. Ah, oh, can't quite get up there. a window. Ah, yes. Ertree bow. Does physical and holy damage. Takes faith, of course. Longbow featuring Urtree's styling. In times of old, when faith and battle went hand in hand, this weapon was created in tandem with the golden arrow. Scales all arrow damage with faith, revealing its true worth when used with holy infused arrows. Ah, we have a shortcut now. Okay. Just chilling up there, huh? Golden Order Principia. It's a key item. Oh, probably just for incantations, right? Yes. Prayer Book of the Golden Order Fundamentalists. A dense and complex academic treatise that contains the Order's fundamental principles. Radigan's Rings of Light and Law of Regression. Back out here then. Anything to the right? No, we've already been there. Seek item. I think they were pointing over there towards that big spike, but we already got it. The thing of Grand Sacks. Try target lock. Thank you.
Oh, you're a bit special. Okay, what if they just used on me actually limited my max health? I've never had that happen before. What type of damage is that? Are these tombstones? Or just... Tablets? Like, I, I think I see writing on them. It's a little bit hard to tell. Queen's bedchamber. Blessing of the Erd Tree. Incantation. Are you ready? Just getting started. Oh yeah. Oh boy. There's a boss up there. Good luck. Thank you. Weak foe. <laughs> sure. Ooh, who is that? That was our finger maiden. Well, let's see how this goes without summoning them. I, based on what I saw with other fights, like I, I think if you don't summon them, you still kind of can progress their quests, and, and I don't think it's necessary to progress their quests. Also, even these leaves are golden. Stop. Stop peeping. All right, let's go. Graceless, tarnished. What is thy business with these thrones? Godric the Golden. The twin prodigies, Mikola and Melania. General Radan. Praetor Reichard. Luna Princess Rani. Willful traitors. All. Thy kind are all of a piece. Pillagers emboldened by the flame of ambition. Oh, pretty. Felled by King Morgot. Morgot! Last of all kings. You're blocking my way to many things. Many seals.
have got some impressive attacks with a lot of reach. They make up a lot of distance. They do special damage that goes through my shield. Okay, I hit him with one of those bursts, though, and it did a good amount of damage. Those bursts are brutal. See how good magic is against him. Quite good. In fact, it's so good it makes me think it has another phase. Oh, did I interrupt you? Oh my god! Stuck me like a chunk of vegetable on a kebab. These foolish animations to rest. I put the likelihood of a second phase at maybe 50%. Okay, it's probably got another phase, right? No! Okay, whew! What was that, like, fourth try or something? Fourth or fifth? Oh, look at them! Look at what they turned into upon their death! Just a withered, small, normal, human-sized corpse. Morgoth's Great Rune. Remembrance of the Omen King. That was a really cool boss, though. And those attacks were brutal.
Wait, are they moving? Oh yeah, I can talk with them. I, I didn't even see the prompt. They're alive. Let's go see what's waiting for us up there. Ah! What the hell? I didn't think that'd be destructible. Wall of Thorns. Impenetrable thorns refuse all. None may enter the earth tree. Why is it always futility? Therefore, seek north. So up here. Despair. to see you alive a moment to converse with you you were unable to enter the earth tree no prevented by the mantle of barbs the thorns are impenetrable a husk of the earth tree's being that spurns all that exists without the only way to stand before the elden ring and become the elden lord is to pass the thorns my purpose serves to aid in that very act, so I'd like you to undertake a new journey with me to the Flame of Ruin, far above the clouds, upon the snowy mountain tops of the giants. Then I can set the Erd Tree aflame and guide you down the path to becoming Elden Lord. They're going to burn the tree? My god. Rolled medallion. Oh, they gave me the other half of the rolled lift, didn't they? A red mark was made on the map. I wish to journey with you once more to the flame of ruin. Then, I can set the Erd Tree aflame, and guide you. Whew. Okay. Uh... Oh, I'm curious how we can modify the Preceptor's gown. Oh, that's very different. It kind of gets rid of all of that blue. Which is a shame, because it looks quite bland without it. Well, that's interesting. Albrecht's robes were super bulky with the shoulders, but it looks like we can get rid of the shoulder pads. Let's alter that, see what it looks like. I don't know, maybe I'll check the Preceptor's gown as well. 
Oh, we can modify the hat. Turn it into... Whatever that is, let's find out. Shall I turn your runes to strength? Let my hand rest upon you. For but a moment. I'm not used to having her here again. It's your odd. Thoughts, your ambitions. The principles you would follow. Actually, I'm going to save my runes because I should see what I can go spend them on. You know what this means. The Earth Tree has spurned you. The fingers remain still, shaken by this turn of events. They are busy consulting the greater will. When they are finished, the fingers will again offer their guidance. But thousands... If not tens of thousands of moons must first pass. No matter for me, but you. How will you ever manage to wait? My, oh my. I can talk about the fact that I want to burn the impenetrable thorns? Curious what they would say. Heavens forbid. That is not the domain of mere men. The burning of the Erd Tree is the first cardinal sin. And you say you seek the power of the Rune of Death too? The Rune of Death goes by two names. The other is Destined Death. The forbidden shadow plucked from the Golden Order upon its creation. Uh, unleashing the room now would be unthinkable. The fingers would never permit it. Nor would the greater will. But here we are. The fingers dormant, severing our link to the greater will. The realm and all life in ruins. Impossible events transpire beyond the ken of the fingers. Who is to say that the cardinal sin must be cardinal forever? Go on. Finish the job. <laughs> the course you deem most worthy. Surprisingly supportive for something so heretical. How to burn thorns. I mean, we kind of know. Millennia told us, but... You must find kindling. Only the smoldering flame in the great forge of the giants on the highest peak in the lands between can burn the earth tree. But special kindling is required to reignite the flame. For the flame to burn the earth tree... Sacrifice is needed of one who envisions the flame and can lead you to the rune of death. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Okay, what can we make? Morgoth's cursed sword. It takes dex and arcane. And the cursed blood slice is it special that thing looked so cool could also make regal omen bairn uses fp to unleash many wraiths that chase down foes okay so an even better version of that bairn thing takes 50 fp Whew. scales with int and faith okay that wouldn't be good for me then the int would be good of course but my faith is 10 <laughs> so yeah I think this is a soul to pop. What about the equipment? Dawns, queens. Ah, fell omen cloak. Well, that thing looks ugly. Oh, 
Oh, hey. Radon's Greaves might be good as well. Because I kind of want, like, pretty much the heaviest leggings I can get, as long as they don't look weird. For the little bits of them that peek out of my dress. And Radon's Greaves are really, really heavy. Let me buy that. Pop the remembrance of the Omen King and see how many we get. 30,000. That's really not much. Oh no. I think they finally passed away. Rajier. Rajier's bell bearing. And their full set of armor. Oh, that looks very pretty. Oh, the gloves too. Oh, look at the little swoop up on the tips of those boots. Or I guess they're not really boots, whatever you want to call them. Wait, there's something... Oh, they have a letter. What did you write? That'd be info? Letter written in a trembling hand. I forgot to tell you, but it seems D has a younger brother. I heard he lies in a deep sleep in the aqueduct beside the eternal city of Nokron, and it said he stood before the Prince of Death not far beyond that spot. Oh yeah, we met them. Yeah. I wonder if I can actually speak with them now, but I think if they're the person I'm thinking of, they're the one that we, um, they were just like trembling there, and they gave us an a gesture, I think. They must be telling us that for a reason. There must be something to do with them. Ooh, has anything else changed? Or maybe we can tell this D about them? No. I have two bell bearings to check out. How are you doing? What is it? Oh, I can show him Salubus' potion. The one that I was supposed to feed to Nefeli Lu. Although, Salubus is dead now. Is that potion what I think it is? Bloody Salubus. I suppose he's up to something again. Oh, I won't interfere. You go ahead and do what you must. The round table has no code to speak of. But, I ask you this. Are you really going to do the bidding of that twisted dolly botherer? Or would you rather hand that potion to me and see if we can't get one over on the bastard? Uh, well, I don't know if there's much to get over on him because he's dead. Also, I've been mispronouncing his name again, Saluvius. It's Celibus or Saluvis. But I guess I'll hand it over and see what happens. Good. I'll dispose of the potion myself. You go and see Salavis, but don't give anything away. <laughs> I won't. Tell him that you tricked your mark into drinking the potion, as planned. Mm hmm Despite knowing next to bloody nothing, he's so far up his own ass he won't suspect a thing. I'm sure he won't. His inevitable display of arrogance will certainly be a sight to behold. Nefeli's despair. Yeah, when we talked to Nefeli Lou downstairs, they refused to even speak with us. You've already heard. Indeed, it seemed the whelp harbored suspicions, so I had no further use for her. Honestly, what's a man to do? A determined plebeian is more wicked than an omen horn, quite frankly. I suspect that's just what the Queen wants. A dose of ambition to incite the tarnished. I have no idea what the hell they were talking about. Other than they're a prick, but I already know that. Um, unlocated demigods. There are four more demigods yet to be located. Nicola of the Halig Tree, the Unalloyed, his twin Melania, the undefeated swordswoman, Luna Princess Rani, daughter to Renala, and the one only known as the Lord of Blood. 
Rani is said to have cast aside her great rune. So here at the hold, we seek the whereabouts of the remaining three shard bearers. If you should learn anything of these matters, I'll trade your findings for a hidden treasure or a long lost right known only to me. We both desire to stand before the Elden Ring and become Elden Lord. As such, I hope we are compelled to work together. I wonder if we're going to end up fighting Ronnie or just... I don't know. They, Yeah, they're one of the demigods, apparently. There are four Mikola, his twin, Luna. Well... Find the albinoric woman. She hides in a cave. She knows the look. Oh, right. Yeah, the albinoric woman. We went there and they told us we need to take them to the Halig tree. Where should I go? I already kind of know, but let's see. Go ahead into the forge of the flame. You'll need to find the grand lift of rule. I figured. Beyond the forbidden reef. Oh, go if you would. The two fingers lock. Let's see what we can buy now. So, Saluvis, Saluvis's bell bearing. Um, did that add a separate shop? It did. Okay, good. Oh, spells. Nice. Don't we already have this one? I'm not sure. Um, Corm's a defensive arch of numerous magic glint blades. Actually, I don't think we have that specific one. Carrying Retaliation dispels enemy spells and retaliates with glint blades. Glintstone Ice Crag fires massive cold magic from glintstone. Oh, cool. Freezing Mist releases cold mist before caster. Okay, well, I'm going to buy all of these for sure. Rogier's Bell Bearing. Oh, it's for these which we have already bought. I guess, at some point. Ah, right, because they're kind of a store, so the bell bearing is just to make sure even after their death you can still buy all the items. Right, that makes sense. Since we found something that was left by the Dung Eater in that other version, that like other dimensional version of the Roundtable Hold, let's see if we can speak with them now. No. White. You have felt the curse. Mm hmm. I can smell it on you. The box, yet tender. Apparently, my seed bed is ripe and waiting. It was a brief respite, I must say. Go and unshackle my corporeal flesh, trapped in the sewer jail below the capital. Oh. I know exactly what that key's for. I even have it marked on my map. It's past the flowers and the sewers beneath the capital where we just were. Okay, that's perfect. So I'm sorry, is Gowl actually meant to be pronounced Jail? Jail. That just blew my mind. Sewer Jail Key. I can kill you and defile your corpse. Then the pox will truly be your own. Yeah, I'm good. Go and unshackle my traps in this I can kill in the pox. Kinda curious what the key says. I don't know why. I know what it goes to. Unlock sewer jail door set to lie beneath Lindell, the royal capital. Yeah, that's it. Filthy key received from the dung eater. Of course it's filthy. Join split medallion depicting the flame peak. Activates the grand lift of Rold, connecting Lindell to the mountaintops of the giants. We still have part of the Dectus medallion, although I don't know if there's a point in, like, the fact that we get it means there must be a point to constructing it, I would think. But someone told us that the grand lift of Dectus doesn't even work. Let's see if we can talk with Nefeli now. Ah, you. Please. Leave me be. It's pathetic, I know, but I... I need to think. I heard from Gideon. So you know already, do you? Right. It's true. 
My father cast me out for indulging my emotions, forgetting the mission, punishment for offing his pawns. Father, mother, Lord Gideon has offered me guidance all my life. I would have done anything for him to place him on the throne of Elden Lord. And yet I, though it was not my intent, I betrayed him. Hey, if you want to go on a quest to like kill your father, I'll join you. And I can no longer trust him father to think he'd order his men to enact such tragedy. Where is the justice he purports in that? He once told me that if he became Elden Lord, he would never allow the downtrodden to be cheated ever again. Was he simply lying to me? No, no, no. How could I say that? Father has always given me his guidance. And now, I've lost it. Give the Stormhawk King. I think that was an Ash. It was Ashes, but not one that I could use. It was one that refused to be summoned, I think, and it was in the key items category. Is that Ash? I can smell the ancient storm in it. My thanks. I'll gladly take it. I'm not like Broderica. I don't feel the presence of spirits, let alone see them. Still, this ash, it reminds me of my first hawk. Thank you. In this ash, I can smell the ancient storm. It reminds me of my first hawk. Oh, I can't wait to see where their storyline goes. Are they going to manage in, in their worst moment, where they're without guidance? Are they going to manage to summon this hawk that reminds them of their childhood hawk and one that refused to be summoned by anyone else, forge a special bond with it? Oh, that sounds so cool. Well, I think I'm going to end this episode here. I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when we return, I have a literal list of things to do next because we have a lot of leads. We have armors to try. We have keys to unlock places, people to talk to, equipment to check, a whole bunch of stuff to do.